Okay, so welcome back. Happy Monday. I hope we had a great weekend. We'll start with a very quick look at the calendar. Today is class number two. We're covering these two sections in your book. And uh, the topics for today are uh, continued voting plurality with elimination, which is a new method, and then the method of pairwise comparisons, also a new method. Um, one heads up, the voting project will be assigned next class. So a bunch of you gave me ballots via email, and you will vote later on today to help your classmates get their data for their project. Um, and I'll assign the project on uh, Wednesday, and then you'll know exactly what it is you need to do with that. Any questions on the calendar? Okay, so again, jumping in here on page 16, first a very quick note. I do accept homework up to one class late, so if you did not uh, get your homework done today, you can submit it next class. There's no penalty for submitting it uh, up to one class late, all right? So if you have homework to give me, put it right inside those blue folders that are on your table. And then when I come back on Wednesday, you'll take the graded homework out of the folders and then put the new homework in there. That's how we'll pass the homework back and forth. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and write your name on the top of one of those rectangles. And every day you get here, you just write the time that you came into class in your rectangle, okay? All right, so let's go to number one here. Jeff, can you read number one, please? I said Jeff. Page 16. Megan, can you read number one, please? Okay, so the actual method is written out here. We're going to skip that. You can just look at it later as a reference, but I'll explain it as we go through here in number three. We're going to do plurality with elimination. That's the new phrase on this math club election. So remember, uh, we called this thing a preference schedule, and it was a, group, a collection of all the different votes that happened for this election, right? And so, for example, uh, can somebody explain what that column means in terms of the actual voters? Jen? Everybody here? 10 people voted C first, B second, D third, A fourth. Perfect. Okay. Inside of the phrase plurality with elimination is the word plurality. Plurality means we're only looking at what kind of votes? First place votes. So we're only looking at first place votes. And in round one, what we're going to do is tally the first place votes for everybody. So this will look no different than the plain old plurality stuff we did last time. So looking at A, A only won in the first column. How many voters were there that thought A was the best? 14, so we've got 14 right there. B only appears in first place in one column way there at the end. How many people? Four people there. C appears in a couple of places. Make sure you count both of them. All together is 11, any questions on the 11? Really easy to get 11 if you know what you're doing, but mysterious if you don't. So if it's mysterious, speak up. Everybody sees the 11? Okay, and then the last one, D, how many? Eight. Okay, and just a uh, quick head count here, the total of all that stuff. Uh, I think I get 37. Okay, so total is 37, which we'll, co we'll come back to. Okay, so here's what we have to do. We have to ask ourselves if anybody had a majority of first place votes. 37 is the total. So let's go ahead and make a note that the majority, remember majority means more than half. How much is half of 37? It's 18 and change, right? 18.5. We need more than that. So 19. So the majority was 19. Did anybody have a majority? If somebody had a majority, you declare them the winner, and that's the end of the game. There's nothing else to do. But in this case, nobody had a majority, and so what we're going to do now is come around to the other part of the phrase, and that's elimination. We're going to eliminate one of these candidates. Which one do you think we're going to eliminate? B, because B is the weakest candidate according to what we're looking at. So we eliminate the candidate with the fewest uh, number of first place votes. Okay? So the next stage is to eliminate B. So if we're going to eliminate B. Here's the common wrong way to do this. So don't copy this down because it's wrong. A equals C equals 
D equals, you could say, okay, that's 14, that's 11, that's 8. Don't copy it, it's wrong. When we eliminate B, the people that voted for B had a second choice, and we need those people's voice to still be heard. So when we eliminate B, we got to go back and we got to say, okay, let's take a look at these folks right here, because those were the ones that thought B was the best. We cross off B. Who are those four voters voting for now? D. D just got four more first place votes. We see it? Everything else stays the same because that was the only column that B won. So when we eliminate B, A is stuck at 14, C is stuck at 11, but D, we just realized, uh, had eight and then got four more. It's 12. And I'll just circle, D got those four votes and those eight votes, okay? So it's no longer enough just to look on that top row. When you eliminate, everybody moves up. Uh, if you're really neurotic, you could cross off all the Bs everywhere, but the fact is the only one that mattered was the one that's at the top, okay? All right, so looking at this new list of first place votes, we ask ourselves again, did anybody have a majority? No, so we need to eliminate someone. Who gets eliminated now is C. That's kind of interesting because who would you have thought, looking back here, who would you have thought would get eliminated after B? We would have thought D would have gone next, right? But D is no longer the last place candidate once we got rid of B. So we're getting rid of C because they have the fewest number of first place votes. So we eliminate C, which means that we've got an A left and we've got a D left. And so let's come back up here and we're going to eliminate um, C. Which column is the one that's going to change now when we eliminate C? Is the 10 column. Because that, that right there is no longer a vote for C. And that is also no longer a vote for C. Right? So D is now 10 richer plus one more richer. D just got 11 more first place votes. Do we see it? Or who am I talking to right now? Yeah. So, Ricky, you got it? All right, go ahead. Um, okay, so D just got 11 more votes. And this is really funny, gang, because look, these 10 people, who did they think was the best? C. And then who did they think was second best? B. So we're really stretching for what those voters want, but the fact is the best candidates for those voters just both got eliminated. So we've got to keep going down the line until we find somebody who's still in play, all right? So uh, 11 more votes get tacked on to D. So that means that A is stuck at 14 and D is now at 23, is that right? As a quick uh, check, what do you get when you add those numbers? 37. It better be 37 every single time you add the numbers up. Okay, part four. So D is our winner, but uh, in question four here, we're going to write down the complete ranking. So who's first? D. Now, who do you think we're going to make second? It's A. It's the other finalist, right? It was a final between A and D. D won, but A is the other finalist, so that's the second best. And then who do you think next? is C, because C survived longer than B did, right? So we're just kind of working our way back up the line. C, and then finally the first person out is our biggest loser there at the end is B. Okay, so number five, uh, let's see, so we'll go to Chris. Can you read five, please? Okay, so we don't need to go very far. We can actually just look at the plurality winner from our work here. Who was the plurality winner? It was A. So we got that. And then we just did plurality with elimination and we found D. Can somebody just go back real quick and find using Borda? Because we did the same thing, but with Borda. B. What do we think? It's strange, no? I mean, like you would think, if you just 
you vote for your favorite and whoever has the most wins and there's nothing more to voting than that but somehow by counting the vote in different but legitimate ways we got three different winners depending on how we count the vote this isn't uh, yeah C is uh, is not in play here um, I'm not saying that any of these is better or worse than the others I'm just saying this is news for a lot of people that you can get different winners by counting the vote differently the next two classes well the next class in particular we'll talk about fairness and and uh, how do we pick things that are how do we pick ways to count the votes that are fair at the moment all we're looking for is that this kind of surprise factor that gosh you get different winners depending on how you count the votes okay so we're moving on to the next page but before we do just a little bit of logistical stuff so there are some resources that I wanted to make sure that you are aware of so if I go here uh, this is our Moodle page. If you haven't logged in yet, you should probably try logging in later on and check it out. So uh, you never need to go into class announcements. I won't make any here. Um, the syllabus is in this folder. I think the calendar is also in that folder in case you lose yours. Uh, there are some temp sample test problems that are in the packet. Um, uh, and there's some solutions there and also some videos. We can talk about those later. But what I wanted to show you right now is two things. First, uh, if you look in the class notes packet one, you'll see two documents. One of them is just packet one, but one of them has a date in it, September 3rd. And if you open that second PDF, this is what it looks like. Nope, that is not what it looks like. Uh, did I not open it yet? Let's try it here. No, it's this guy down. No, no I thought I opened it. Oh, it's this. Uh, okay, so here's what it looks like. It's a PDF that you can download to your own computer. What is it? It's just exactly what I wrote on the smart board in our last class, right? So don't feel like you need to frantically copy every single thing that you see me write here. I would much rather have you here and um, actively thinking about the material and less mindless writing down of the material. You will have a full color copy of the notes. Um, I'll post them up here at least once a week. I don't know if I'll do it twice a week, we'll see. But certainly after every Wednesday's class, I'll post the updated version on uh, Moodle, okay? So that is there for you. And the other thing I wanted to point to in Moodle is uh, this down here, uh, links to class videos. If you click on that, it opens up a new page that looks like this. Uh, we have had one class so far, and you can see I'm wearing a Bluetooth right now. I record all of the classes that I teach. And so, for example, uh, I'm just going to play this for one second here. Okay, so what you get is uh, whatever I say and whatever is written up on the smart board in real time. Unfortunately, the mic isn't strong enough to pick up your wonderful questions and answers. I'm sorry, this is the best that I can do, all right? So that video uh, and all the subsequent videos are posted in YouTube. Uh, the last thing I'll say about this is that you don't need to go to, you, you don't need to, go to Moodle to get it to the video if you know how to find it, um, but finding it can be quite challenging. This is the title of this video and if you type in exactly that phrase you will find it but if you type in anything else you're probably not going to find it so here's the pattern 117 is the title of this class 2014 September 3rd was the date of that class notice the zero it's always a two-digit day okay so if you know the format you can zip to any video that you're interested in so for example today's will just be labeled with the 08 okay and again you have all the dates corresponding to the material on the syllabus questions on those resources Okay, next thing, we are back here, number six, and we'll go to Sarah. Okay, let's pause there. We're going to come back to the next sentence momentarily. But for right now, let's just take a look at, again, the same schedule we've been looking at. First question in Part A says, how many voters are there? How many were there? 37. You can check it again by adding those, but 37 voters in total. Okay, so here's this new method. It's called the method of pairwise comparisons. Pair means how many? Two. And what we're going to do is look at every possible head-to-head -head pairing of these candidates. So we're going to list all possible matchups. So for example, A versus B, A versus C, A versus D, 
that takes care of A versus everybody. What's the next one we haven't written yet? B versus, yeah, so the question is, do we need to write B versus A? And the answer is no. We're, A versus B, B versus A are the same thing. We just need to find out how they do against each other, but we don't need to list it again. So what's the next one? B versus C, and B versus D, and then C, D. There are six of them. We've got them all up there. That is every possible head-to-head -head between these four people, okay? Now what we want to do is figure out who wins in each of these cases. This can get tricky. Let's give it a shot. Okay, uh, I don't know how you're going to do this because you don't have the fancy highlighters that I have, but I'm going to highlight A in one color and B in another. There, there, right? And we're going to look at every one of these 37 people and decide out of A and B only, which one do they prefer? I'm not looking here to say that these guys really like C. I don't care. I just want to know out of A and B, who do they like the best? So look at the first column, A or B. Who gets those 14? A gets those 14. So I'm going to give A 14 votes right there. And then we're going to look at the next column out of A and B. Who do these 10 people like more? They like B more because B is higher, right? You don't get to skip them just because they thought C was the best. They have a preference of B versus A. They like B better than A, even though they didn't like either of them as much as C, all right? So that's 10 votes for who? For B. How about these next eight votes? B, by virtue of being above, B is preferred. The next four? B, those guys really like B. And then here is B. So all the rest of the votes go to B. So if I'm counting, I'd say 10 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1. 23. We see it? Really common wrong answer. I'll write it and then I'll fix it. Is to say, okay, how many first place votes does B get? It's four. How many first place votes does A get? 14. And so it's really common but wrong to say 14 to 4 is the score. Because you've only heard from 18 people. We need to hear from all 37. And as a quick check, what do you get when you add the right numbers, which were 14 and 23? You get 37. Right? So this is not a first place only. This is a head-to-head, -head and every vote needs to be heard. Okay, let's look at A versus C. So I'm going to unhighlight all my Bs here and then bring C into the fold. There we go. So uh, the first people, first column, who do they like? They like A, so 14 there. Uh, next column, A or C? That's a C. Next one, C, C, and C. So what's the score here? 23. This is kind of easy because everybody else hates A, right? Like A is in the bottom for everyone except that first column. How about A versus D? It's going to be 14 to 23. We don't need to go through it again. A is last everywhere else. But the, there's a little bit more work to do when we get to these other ones that don't involve A. So let's try the next one. So I'll bring my B's back in blue, and then my C's in green. <clears throat> and I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds with your neighbors, see if you can agree on the score B versus C. Okay, so we've got 18 to 19, that was very close. And then we can look at B versus D, and finally C versus D. So take another minute in your groups, see if you can get those two head-to-head -head scores. A couple people say 28 to 9. Anybody confirm 25, 12 for CD? Okay, so we're going to jump ahead, and I don't expect that uh, many people had a chance to do those, but we've got a couple of confirmations. You can check it later. It's just more of the same kind of calculation. Not hard, but a lot of detail. Okay, now we still have to find a winner. All we have is head-to-head -head matchups. So what we're going to do is we are going to circle who wins in every head-to-head. -head. A versus B. Who wins? B wins. We're going to circle B because they won that head-to-head. -head. A versus C. That's C winning there. A versus D. D wins in that one. 
B versus C was very close, but who won? C won there. B and D is B, and then finally C, D, C. And some of you can probably just look at that and decide, well, who's our overall winner? It feels like C should be the overall winner because actually C beat everybody, right? C beat A and C beat B and C beat D. But sometimes you don't always have one candidate that beats every other one. So there is a way to assign points. That's what we're going to do now. Every time you win, you get a point. So I like to do this with tally marks. What's that? So the B right there, one point right there. C gets a point. Next one is D gets a point. And now C gets another one, so we'll just tack that on to C's total. Next point goes to B, and the last one goes to C. And so this is a very concrete way to look and decide, well, who gets the most points is so going to be our winner. So with three points, C is the winner. OK. Uh, there is one other thing that might happen, although not in an election with 37 people. But there could be a tie, yes? Right? Could be a tie in a head-to-head. -head. Uh, if there's a tie, you give each candidate half a point. Seems fair. That's written right down here. So one point if you win, some points if you lose, half a point if you tie. So who's our winner? Well, we decided that C had three points. That was more than anybody. So C is the winner. <clears throat> but it seems like we should be able to write down the, did I get that right? It was C, wasn't it? And now the complete ranking. So who was first? C, who would you say was the second most preferred? It was B, it was B or D, which one had? B, B had two points. D had one point and then A. Not a single point. Okay. So that's our fourth voting method. It's our last voting method. And I'm hopeful that that complete ranking phrase isn't intimidating. You just rank them in whatever natural way appears. It was quite natural to rank these guys in this order. Questions on method of pairwise comparisons? OK, let's go to the next page. We're going to talk about a little bit of a downside with this method. Uh, how many people do we have in this room? 3, 6, 10, 13, 16, 15, wait, 13, 16, 18. Um, all right, there are 18 of you. Suppose that all of you are going to run for a class president, 18 of you. And I want to try to do every single head-to-head, -head, right? We'll get everybody to vote, and then we're going to do this head-to-head -head of everybody versus everybody. Yes? Ricky, stand up. So what we're going to do first is figure out how many head-to-heads Ricky is involved in. Go ahead and stand up. Okay, this is one. Have a seat. You stand up. This is two. You're still standing. Yep, that's two. Next one, stand up. That's three. Uh, there were 18 people in this room. How many of you are facing off against Ricky head to head? 17 of you. We had only six comparisons that we had to do a moment ago. We have 17. Have a seat. Now you stand up. What's your name? Anthony. In my defense, I haven't met Anthony, so I don't know his name yet. All right, so there's Anthony. Anthony against everybody. Another 17? 16, because we've already taken care of Anthony versus Ricky, right? So we had 17 plus 16. Have a seat, Anthony. Monica, stand up. How many more comparisons is Monica going to lead to? 15. 17 plus 16 plus 15. Have a seat. All the way down to 1, and that's a, that's a big number, right? 17 plus 16 plus 15, all the way down to 1. So I'm going to give you... So this is one downside, is that there's a lot of comparing to do if the number of candidates is large. So I'm going to give you a little formula here that tells you how many comparisons there are when n is the number of candidates. So here's the formula, uh, n times n minus 1 divided by 2. n times n minus 1 divided by 2. So, for example, how many candidates did we have for our math club election? Yeah, the one we just did. How many, that was how many voters, but how many candidates were there? There were four. A, B, C, and D is what the names of the candidates were. So, what we're going to do is, let's see if this formula gives us the right answer. 
we're going to plug in 4 for both of those ends. So 4 times 4 minus 1 divided by 2, which is really 4 times 3 divided by 2. 12 over 2 is 6. The six things that we wrote down before, yes? So I think we could now answer the question that we didn't want to. How many comparisons would we need to do if we really had an election with this? Uh, how many of you are there? 18? With the 18 of you. 18 is playing the role of N. So we would have to do, in our class, 18 times. I'm 17. Divide by 2. Anybody know this number? Maybe 150, 153? Somebody check that for me. 153. So if we were going to, no. Yeah, it's 153. So 153 comparisons if we wanted to do this class election, which gets pretty unwieldy pretty quick, right? I'm not sure. Is this right or no? One fifty three. You guys should not doubt me. Come on. Okay, so uh, that's that. Let's take a look down here at number nine. Um, so you might be wondering, you know, like with this, in order to have this whole ranking system, because at the moment we just pick who we think is the best. So if we wanted to do an entire ranking system, just logistically, is it is it possible? Like, can we come up with ballots where it's easy enough to rank? And the answer is, yeah. Uh, this was the uh, election that was held in Burlington, Vermont, just a few hours north of here back in 2006. It was a mayoral election and then some other elections over there on the side. So take a look. It's as simple as this in terms of filling out a preference ballot. So, uh, who do we think is the best? Monica, who do you think is the best? Uh, which, which one? Uh, uh, that's the bottom one here. Okay. All right. So, we think Faye is the best, and we fill in number one for Faye. Ashley, who's second best? Paula. A clear second choice. It's not hard to fill this in, right? This, this is not something that um, like our voting system would break down because it's so complicated to try to get people to vote the entire preference. It's easy. And they did it in Burlington. So here's the bad news. Uh, this again was back in 2006 and Burlington used plurality with elimination by using this kind of thing and plurality with elimination was the first thing we did today. They did it for a couple of elections, but then the city had another vote and reverted back to the boring old plurality method. So that's why I can only give you an old one. It's they don't do it anymore. But uh, the point is, it's not hard to do. Okay, so uh, this whole voting thing is not just uh, something to talk about to fill our time in this class. What's happening tomorrow here in the state of Massachusetts? Tomorrow. That has to do, has to do with voting. The primaries are happening tomorrow. We are. It's true. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Uh, let's come back over here. This one. All right, if you Google the phrase Massachusetts vote, write that down. Massachusetts vote. If you Google that phrase and you skip over the ad, which is the very first link, and you go to the second link, you'll go to the official Massachusetts page. And I just want to spend a couple minutes looking over some of the information on the official Massachusetts page relevant to tomorrow, which is a big voting day here in our state. You can see the primaries happen tomorrow, 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Um, the statewide elections happen November the 4th. So the first thing I want to do is uh, show you what happens when you go to this first link here, uh, view my ballot. Okay, so uh, if you want to find out where you are supposed to vote, you type your address in. This is where I pause the video, and here we are. I vote at Town Hall, which is 9 Montague Road. Apparently, my ward number is 0. My precinct number is 1. I can get a map if I want to. Right. Here's the address, phone number, email for any Town Hall-related stuff. 
And then I can click on what my actual ballot will look like. I'll make this a little bigger for people in the back to see. So I can click on my Republican ballot, and I have a chance before I get to town hall tomorrow to see what it's actually going to look like, and if I feel like being diligent, finding out a little bit about the people running in this election. So I'm going to vote for senator. It looks like there's uh, just the one person. Governor, I have a couple of choices. Lieutenant governor, attorney general, secretary of state, treasurer, auditor, all of this stuff. Apparently there's uh, no nominations for some of these things. And anytime there's more than one candidate, then it's an opportunity to actually, you know, find out what they're about, read their platforms, and decide who I think is more aligned with my views on things. Okay. All right. So that's my ballot. And uh, you could do the same thing with the Democratic ballot. And then if we go back and just show the world my uh, home address, uh, let's see. Um, I want to go to this one right here. Uh, am I registered to vote? If you're not, you should be. But if you don't know, you type in your information here and it will tell you. It will look up the voting records and it knows who's registered here in the state of Massachusetts. And you can find out very quickly, like in a second, whether or not you're registered in Massachusetts. If you aren't registered, then you click on this guy and it tells you how to register. There are a bunch of different options. All right. The fact is, if you're not registered yet, you are not voting in tomorrow's primaries. Uh, you got to register at least 20 days before the primaries happen. But if you're not registered, then get registered tonight, and then you'll be prepared for the big vote in November, all right? Okay, and then the only other thing I wanted to show you was down here, this uh, ballot question information, and I'm going to click on the first link. So also on tomorrow's ballot, besides these candidates running for these different positions, are questions that we are being asked on a statewide level. One of them has to do with the gas tax. One of them has to do with uh, deposits on like soda cans and things like that. Another one has to do with gaming here in the state of Massachusetts. And the last one has to do with earned sick time for employees. And so each of these is a yes or no vote that we are going to be asked to vote on tomorrow. And if you click on a link, it gives you the summary. It tells you what a yes vote would do. And it provides you a reason for voting in favor. And it provides you for a reason voting against. And you decide again, which one you think you are most aligned with. Now, uh, a couple of days ago, I went and I looked at each of the four questions. It took me a total of five minutes to figure out whether I was voting yes or no to each of these questions. I really think it's not hard to become a little bit informed before you make this decision tomorrow. Any questions on this information? Okay. So, so, so. Uh, next page is where the activity starts. But before we start the activity, you guys are going to, like I said, help out your neighbors by voting on all of their elections. If you didn't get your information to me on time, then you won't be on this page, and you'll have to conduct your own vote. But for the rest of you, you can get some data right now. Four. Okay, so let's be clear that we know exactly how this is supposed to work. Everybody see uh, in the first row with some writing in it, see the word muffins? Everybody see the word muffins towards the top? So you're going to rank them favorite to least favorite. Your choices are blueberry, corn, banana, and chocolate chip. Notice the letters A, B, C, and D for each of those choices. And you see the big arrow in the top right? That's where you're going to put your vote. So for example, I wrote CBDA, which would be my way of saying banana, corn, chocolate chip, and then blueberry. Everybody see? You're going to put A, B, C, D. I just made this up. I, I, that has nothing to do with muffins. Uh, banana is clearly the top choice. Um, OK, so fill in A, B, C, D in some order in every single row that has a question in it, OK? And once you're done, uh, just collect these things on the table. I'll come around to pick them up and then start on the group activity.